What would you tell a 17, 18, 19 year old who is you know, 10 years younger than you mm-hmm. and yet has been addicted to porn for five years? I'm going to tell them the same thing I would not have listened to if, when I was their age and I didn't listen to when I was their age. And I was told multiple times. I can't tell you how many conferences I went to, how many preachers that talk about it. Well, there's not a lot that they'll talk about it. But when they do talk about it, they, they're like, you know what? Like I thought he was going to, well, well, there's there's one that talks about it. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. But like, the, but like, ca- the Catholic priest kept wanting he, to talk yeah, about it a lot. In his private chambers. <laughs> he wanted me to have a private conversation about it and, and show him which way. Well. <laughs> That's not. That's We're not that, going down that this, route. Stereotypical. Uh, role. <laughs> oh wait, but 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 the thing was like, I keep telling how many times I heard this was like, just open up, just tell somebody, tell not just someone, tell your like like they're like go like at sixteen, seventeen year old. There's nothing more terrifying than saying, hey, go tell your parent that you have pornography addiction. Correct. Yeah. Right. Like no, there's nothing more terrifying than that. And so like I wish that I would have listened to that because. The, my 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 family knew nothing really. I kind of mentioned like, hey, I dealt with it a little bit, and I never really got over it, so I never really talked about it. And I remember the night that I was telling you about where I lost my virginity in a one-night stand. I remember the next day I was in such a deep, depressive hole. Right. Because I want you to put me in my shoes real quick. I was a minister. I was a youth leader at that point. Yeah. And I had been preaching against don't fall into this. Don't do yeah. Literally preaching it. I was the biggest hypocrite there was. And I'm literally preaching this. And then – Literally, I here I am sitting at the crossroads yeah. of what I've been preaching. Tremendous about. conflict. And so it was a minute, tremendous conflict. It was just the deepest, darkest hole I've ever been in. Um, one of two deep, dark holes I've been in my life that God pulled me out of. And I remember calling my mom the next day. And I talked to my mom about everything. And I was just like... But even about this? I did that time. I had mentioned it to her before, like, hey, I've dealt with this. I didn't really get into details. But I called her up and I was like, Mom, like, I got to talk to you. I got to let this out to somebody. I said, um, you know, basically what happened was I was on this, doing this, and I invited this girl to my house last night and we had sex. And I just, I've just been in this deep, dark hole all day. I don't know what to do. I've been praying. I feel distant. And I wish I would have done that when I was 16 or 17. Yeah. Because my right. mom's reaction right. to that was nothing but love and kindness. Oh. I, thought, I thought my mom was going to tear me a new one, like, you've preached about this, you've done right. this, you've done that, blah, blah. Well, it sounds like she's a Christian lady. Yeah. She is. and she. But I mean a real she, Christian. She, she surprised me because, you know, sometimes... Judgy not. Yeah. Exactly. Well, and, so, and she surprised me, really, because I didn't know, like, because sometimes she doesn't talk about how deeply she thinks about religion and, and Jesus and all that, but I remember she just said, um, Chandler, I mean, I can't say I'm not disappointed, she said, but... Um, I love you. Yeah. And yeah. I'm here for you, whatever you need, whatever you need to get through this. We're here for you. We're here to hold your hand. Through. I mean, this is me at 25 years old right. saying this. And I'm like, she's like, I will hold you, whatever you need. She said, and like, don't think, and I kept hearing this, repeat, don't think that you're anything less because of the sin you committed. Because in the eyes of God, you're not. Right. Um, you know, it's it's like it says, and I think it's in Romans eight eight one. It's like therefore there is no condemnation in those that are in Christ Jesus, right? And because of that, that's not saying oh you can do whatever you want. That's saying like no, like though you sin, and though you still need to go and sin no more, like the woman we saw, you know, in in, in John where they, you know, he told him cast cast the stones, stones right? right? What did he say at the end of that? He said go and sin no more, right? Right? He said go and repent, right? And so it's like. There's no condemnation that there's what I was kind of getting at earlier was there's a difference between guilt and shame. There's a guilt for me doing that, but there's not shame from that. Right. Right. There's not shame that's holding me down. Shame is what holds you down. And so I the advice I would give to if there's someone Well, it was shame that kept you from telling anybody all exactly, those years. Exactly. Right. So I would say to, to answer your question. But he was he was maturing it. That's what I was yeah. Yeah. At. Yes. Emotionally, mentally, yeah. that a seventeen year old may mm-hmm. doesn't yeah. have yet. Yeah. It's a vastly mm-hmm. different uh, admission process, mm-hmm. coming clean yeah. and taking the risk of being torn to pieces, mm-hmm. and, and but that, instead you receive love. Yeah, and then I'll tell you this again: a couple of months, probably about seven, eight months later, I'm working at a church. Okay, I'm outside of state, and I'm working at a church out in New Mexico, and I'm still dealing with pornography. It's still an issue in my life, and. 
there was a situation that came up. Basically, I got back to the same situation. I didn't have a hookup with this girl, but I did, you know, exchange some Snapchats with her. Right. And she found out I worked at a church. She sent those Snapchats to the church. Right. And that got you into trouble. And that got me fired, basically right. fired from the church. Yeah. And I'm I'm willing to and open and talk about this because this is just part of my story. Yeah. I mean, two years from now, this Very is going to be my testimony. Yeah. And it is my testimony even right now, what God has done in my life even yeah. since then. But I know that at that point, I just kept remembering, like, God is not done with you, right? And, like, you, you talk about the this shame. This is the start. Yeah, almost. yeah, it was the shame. And so, like, for me, I was so scared. Like, two or three weeks before that happened, I would actually went to my superior and I said, hey, man, this is my one of the pastors that's ahead of me. He's like my, my boss. I said, dude, I said, I got to come clean. I said, I'm struggling with pornography. I knew if I said that, I might lose my job because I'm working at a church. I right. knew if I said that, that might cost me what all that I've worked for up to that point. Well, it wasn't really all that I worked for. is what God had put me in, right? But, like, I, I knew that that was a huge risk. Huge risk. And I still had to do it. And How did he respond? He responded by saying, um, well, that's not good, first of all. He said... He said, "We don't pornography need to, bad. Pornography bad. You know, <laughs> UK bad. Pornography bad. Uh, you go into details." Yeah. <laughs> but he, he said, "He said uh, he he looked at me. He said, um, he said, well, we have to go talk to you at church. So we got to talk to HR, talk to our bosses, see what we need to go from here." And the plan was at that point, maybe a day or two later, I talked with HR, and they were going to get me a counselor. And they were actually good. The church was going to pay right. for a counselor. They were going to go in. And they were going to, you know, help me through this process. They were going to do it with love and kindness. And I was like, man, like, this and then I cool. ended up, and then two or three, you know, a month or two later, I ended up screwing up and just falling back into that while I was back home in Tennessee. I was out of my element again. Right. I was back in the environment that I was sick yeah. in. It's hard to heal in the environment that you got sick exactly. in. Exactly. You know? And so for me, like, I say all that to say this, to answer your question, if I was a 16, 17 year old kid, that was dealing a struggle with pornography. And I could give them some advice. The first thing I would do is go to someone you trust. It doesn't have to be your parents. Go to someone you trust that is a mentor, not just your friends, because they're going to look at yeah. you and they're going to say, oh, well, I struggle with it too. Da, da, da. It's nothing. Or they might even look at you and say, well, I struggle with that too. I want to feel Well, which too. ones do you watch? Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> I would go to someone you trust, the a, a mentor. If that's your father, that's your father. If that's your mother, that's your mother. Right? right? If that's your, you know, uncle. If that's your, you know, dominatrix. Pastor, if that's your pastor, you know, if that's you, you know, your pimp. you know, something <laughs> of that nature. Like someone you trust, go to them and say, "Listen, I don't know how. I don't know who to talk to about this. I don't know how to fix this, but I am deeply help. addicted to pornography, and do not hold out on the details." Yeah. Because it's easy in this culture to say, yeah. "Oh, I'm addicted to pornography," and to minimize it. Yeah, yeah. It, don't don't try to blow no, it over. No. Say, "I'm addicted to pornography." This is the extent of my addiction, right? So, if it led to other things, led to other things, but this is the extent of my addiction. In opening up to that key individual, then yeah. the hope is that you yeah. are received. Yes, that's why like I say your someone mother you did. trust. Like yes. your mother did, right? That's why I say someone you trust, and I would hope that if it's a pastor you're opening up to, yeah. that that would be someone that's going to be loving and not going to throw the book at you. Right, I can't promise that being a Christian my whole life. I can say every opportunity I've had with that because I actually did go open up to my pastor after I talked to my mother because I, I had a really good relationship with my pastor because right. I was actually working on being a pastor at some point and I talked to him a lot about it. And so I went to him and he was also like, "Hey, man, like with pastors," he said, "You have no idea how big of an epidemic this is with pastors." 